Hi friend, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting, and today I want to take a look at a new controller that's on the market, a guy I met at Transworld I was tipped off to, and uh, he sent me a demo unit that I want to check out. Um, so, um, this is, you know, not really sponsored, um, but just uh, something I'm seeing out here and a little update on the controller situation. Uh, because as we know, I mean, this won't age well, hopefully, hopefully this will not age well, but it's 2022, uh, it is spring, and controllers are really hard to come by, okay? Uh, in the Christmas light industry, in the past couple years, the big names were Falcon and Culp, uh, both great controllers, uh, and the Falcons running their own software, the Culp's running the FPP software, with Dan Culp being the main, uh, the main developer there, as far as I understand, okay? So... At the Trans World Trade Show a couple weeks before I recorded this, uh, there was this guy there. Somebody actually tipped me off to it, uh, a client of ours, um, hats off to Zach, and said, hey, in the Halloween section, there's a guy with a Pixel controller. And I said, that's interesting, and it's FPP-based. I said, oh, okay. So let's. So I wanted to walk over and check it out because I was told you know, it was interesting to look at. And, and it was this guy, Kurt Controllers. So a couple things that are interesting. One. He's in Canada. Um, that helps uh, people in Canada get stuff, but they'll ship it to the U.S. And uh, you shouldn't encounter any tariffs uh, as long as your purchase isn't over $800. Even the shipping, I think he said, is like $20 for an average package that may have one or multiple controllers in it. So not bad there. Um, let's look at the controller itself. So he has sent me here the PB Pixel controller. Now what you get uh, if you purchase it is uh, we'll go to the page here is doo -doo 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 -doo. now this guy he does come from halloween so he's got these different prop controllers for animatronic stuff and whatever um in christmas that's not really what we do um but i want to point out a couple really great things um the first is that uh you know that they're donating to fpp Kurt is every time somebody buys a controller. Okay, ten dollars uh, goes directly to the developers of X Lights and FPP. Okay, um, so I don't know exactly how that breaks down. I'm sure if we asked, we could find out. Um, but I appreciate that he's doing that. Uh, one of the things I love, just to jump on a little sandbox here, is about open source type software uh, like X Lights, like FPP, is if someone wants to come out with a new piece of hardware, like a new FPP device here. Um, they're totally open to do so, as far as I understand, because the, the software's open, it's community-run, etc. But what I love, of course, is that, you know, this guy comes in, he can probably write software, I'm going to guess, because I talked to him and he, he's real smart and kind of the developer type. <laughs> but he's choosing not to because there's already something useful out there that works with his device. And uh, there's a couple reasons why to look at a controller like this. The first is this year, hey, we're tight on controllers. Nobody can find controllers. They're out of stock everywhere. This guy's building a new one. He says he's going to have stock. You know, that's number one. Like, hey, we can get them. Number two, I think he's made some really great improvements that uh, could be really helpful to people running Christmas light shows. Okay. So to show you uh, his Pocket Beagle Base controllers, um, one of the things, a couple things I really like about these. So this is the PB pixel controllers the one yes that's the one i have and the complete just has gpio pins which we may not use in christmas um but here's what i like about it. okay you buy this and you get the pocket beagle it's our it's included automatically in the price you don't have to add it on you don't have to select it anything at as well as the sd card with the latest version of fpp installed upon it okay now for this demo i had i had checked it yesterday uh with the sd card he had on it just for kicks you know just for fun i grabbed the latest version of fpp put it on a fresh sd card just stuck it in there haven't powered it up yet because i want to do that for testing um i also have one of these edup uh wireless adapters which if you're familiar with the culp controllers and others uh these are kind of the the wireless adapters to get network on the uh controller now a couple improvements that this guy uh kurt has made that i really like um he's definitely you know this is a big controller right it has 32 ports of output on it there are uh can we see this yeah we can see this pretty good there are four power inputs okay so each one is rated i believe for uh 20 amps um i believe or 30 and uh and they have five amp fuses very standard okay uh Terminal blocks, 
our three pin. They're a little larger. They can do the typical WS28, uh, 11, 12, 13, blah, 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 blah. Any WS28, uh, 11 type pixels. Um, and I also appreciate, here's a couple improvements that he's made that I really like. Okay. Um, the first is the board's thick. It's, it's really sturdy. Uh, the second is that there are two DMX ports with terminal blocks on board. Uh, that's been my frustration with other controllers sometime is I work with moving heads a lot. I work with DMX a lot. I like to see a plug for DMX instead of some funky pins that hang up that you got to solder too carefully or something like that. I want it complete. Uh, you know, I love the Falcons, they use the RJ45 and you can get a cheap adapter, um, but a terminal block is just as good to me. And I like that it's the same part as the pixel outputs. I mean, yeah, that means you could technically plug in pixels to DMX, it would not do anything, it would be fine. Vice versa, you, you could potentially fry your DMX device, um, I'm not sure about that, but... You know, as long as you're careful, I like the, the fact that it's the same part. Um, if you notice, my board's not quite full because he had run out of connectors. I ordered some. They haven't come yet. I wanted to make this review because we've got a lot going on here. Um, and I'm just busy. So um, that's why there are not plugs on all of them, though they would be when you order them. Um, and, oh, and USB. Full-size USB port. I love that. Okay. Okay. I like that it has the full-size port. So it's converting, basically, the little port on the Pocket Beagle into a full-size USB port, so you can just plug this right in. Um, it's got nice mounting holes that are easy to get to, to uh, put it on a board. Of course, you have to do that with the terminal blocks uh, out in those areas. Not a big deal uh, for when you mount it. And um, I think that's about it. You know, this uh, this board and this Pixel controller, it's, it's well-designed, it's well-built, it's priced reasonably, um, and I like it so far. You know, just the fact that in a time where we have shortages, somebody's come forth with a new idea. Um, it's not like an exact copy of the cult boards, because I wouldn't like that. If it was an exact copy of the cult controllers where it was literally like laid out the same and, and had all the same features and stuff, I wouldn't like that. But it's different. Okay? I like that it's all flat in one piece. There's nothing hanging out like off the back. It's just got a flat back for securing to an object. And like I mentioned, those DMX outs on terminal blocks, I really appreciate. So let's go ahead and plug this in and connect to it on our computer. So I've just got it attached to a simple small power supply. Uh, the first, the V1, the first power plug is what's going to supply power to the pocket beagle. And then I have just hooked up some pixels that I had around to a terminal block. Going to plug those into port one so that we have verification that it works correctly. So let me go plug that in. I'll be right back and we'll go talk to it from X lights. All right. So I booted it up. I've just seen here that the uh, FPP network, the default one has showed up here. So I'm going to connect to it wirelessly. Uh, the default password is Christmas. I believe the C's capital, but I've, uh, if I connect this computer before, I can't remember. Um, and, and, uh, the one thing, the one caveat that some people might not like about this controller I just thought of is that there is no screen on it. Um, I'm not sure I care because honestly, I don't really use the screen much. Um, once you get used to the way FPP works and, and the fact that I guess because I learned on, you know, running it on Raspberry Pis that just, you know, didn't have a screen, um, that wasn't a problem. So I'm going to hit discover here. And I just got this computer, so I'm having to, like, do everything, everything. Just see if it finds the FPP device. Okay, cool. So, see, it found the device, um, 192.168.8.1. And uh, I believe he told me that I can make it a FPP device and make it a... Uh, Oh, I don't remember. Maybe this one, PB16. Let's try with expansion. If we hit visualize, that gives us 36 ports and two serial. So I think that's the one he told me to run it as. Because um, the serial ports being the two DMX. So we'll save that. And then I'm just going to go, I'm going to log into this real quick. Okay, so... Uh, this is an FPP device. It works the same way as they, they all do, um, which is cool. You know, this is, um, you've got all the standard settings. I've done this in other videos before. Um, the basic setup, go to storage setting, grow file system. Um, I'm actually not going to do that because of the rebootness that's required. 
Um, and as we'll see here, if we go to outputs, let's see, we've got the ability, we've got all the pixel strings, well, 16 show up. Um, so I guess we can do, I think we'll choose this again, PB16 with two serial. Um, I can always, if this doesn't work, oh, I'm going to hit save. I don't know if I needed to do that. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's scratch that. Uh, I'm going to come back in because, you know, what I want to do here always is like when things don't automatically configure, I want to test it for you guys. So I'm going to leave it where it was just on this standard uh, first pixel here. Enable it. Make it an F8. Restart the FPPD. And then over here in X lights, I'm going to go ahead and add in a model. I'm just going to do a matrix because that's easy. And I'm going to make it 32 strings by 50. Sure thing. And then controller is going to be FPP. It's going to start at port one. And then I think that's everything I need there. Then I'm going to upload it. And so what I want to see here, a couple things I want to see. So it says it's good to go. Um, and so I want to see a couple things. First, I want to see, okay, is it getting, or that's the output. Let's go to the inputs page. Input is enabled. Um, let's see. There is not an input type. I wonder if... Okay, there is auto upload configuration, auto size, full X lights control. Um, so let's just say I turn on output to lights. And I want to see if the input also comes in, the DDP input. So I'll hit save here. I'm just going to toggle this again. Let it upload to the device come over here so it enables input it doesn't show any input um, so we'll see in a minute if there's anything there in theory it should have 4800 channels on the output side we're going to see pixel strings boom my matrix showed up everything looks good and so then I should be able to go here to test mode And enable the test mode. And so far we've got nothing. Um, so that means either I wired my lights in wrong or something's not right. I believe it is. We don't have any channels. I, I think I need to set this inputs up first. Um, didn't set up automatically. And so let's just set up see it being DDP I'm not sure actually what to set up correctly um, so let's just set up one okay maybe DDP maybe I, I admit I don't use DDP a lot so just because I don't use DDP a ton I'm gonna switch it here and uh, people that work with DDP all the time are probably laughing at me but I use E131 a lot so it's 10 universes um, so say an auto uploads all on. So I'm just going to hit the output to lights. See if anything comes up here now. Yep. So that all configured. Um, good to go. Now I'll restart it just to be sure. Test mode. None of that, so let's now go to just double check output settings. Enabled, that's all set up. We have the correct type of pixels. So that should be working. Uh, and last but not least, I'm just going to toss in a quick sequence and make sure, just make sure it's not uh, anything going on here. Okay, so I'm going to double check my wiring, uh, make sure that's working correct, and uh, just check my settings, see what I've missed here, and then let you know. All right, so loaded his software, uh, tested it, it's working. Uh, it's the same version of FPP, so I think I missed a really tiny setting somewhere. I will double check with Kurt before I post this review and insert anything here if there's anything to be concerned about there. Um... 
That being said, um, it's a really nice controller. Um, you know, everything seems to work well. You see here we're in test mode, woohoo. And then actually I haven't tested it in X lights yet, but there's no reason why it shouldn't work. Famous last words, now it's, it's lighting up. We see it running this butterfly right here. Plugged in a second string of pixels to make sure that wasn't my problem. Um, so yeah, everything seems to work as intended. Uh, just to give a quick overview, you know, quick like recap about these Kurt controllers. Um, overall, you know, I like the PB Pixel controller from Kurt. Um, is it perfect for everyone? No, of course not. Uh, every show is different needs. Everybody needs different controllers. This has 32 close range ports in a really small area. Uh, so if you've got a show with a lot of elements close together, this could be a really good fit for you. Um, if you use DMX, this could be a really great fit for you because it's got direct DMX outs on it without any finagling, without using up other ports or something like that. They're just there. Uh, I love the full-size USB as well. Uh, no screen might bother some people, uh, and there's also no audio out like the Culp controllers. So what I like about this, again, is, you know, it really feels like and seems like a good, well-built controller that's easy to configure and does what it's supposed to. Uh, just a word here is that, you know, in the midst of this recording in the past week or two and stuff, we've seen a number of other people putting out new controllers that are FPP based. I've seen two or three out there. Um, and I've seen some flack out there, some people kind of throwing arrows, you know, getting frustrated with these people. Uh, some of the other ones, I haven't looked at them as closely as I probably should, and I will, but, you know, they seem to be maybe more direct clones of the Culps. Um, I, th I really feel like as long as whoever's selling this is, you know, putting in a donation on this open source software because their controller runs on it, like, I feel like that's good. Um, sure, you don't want to tick off the developers at the end of the day, you want to keep them happy, but at the same time, anyone who's designing these controllers and making them can certainly step in and help develop as well if they have the time and skills in order to do so. I certainly don't. Um, this is getting long, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about this, uh, let us know below. I'm sure Kurt will be in there from Kurt Controllers. I'll let him know if there's any questions or anything I can answer. Um, but other than that, I mean, this thing, you know, it, it works well. It seems to do what it's supposed to. Uh, my only maybe wish list would be um, to have a second USB port, which it kind of looks like there's a spot for one. Oh, I wonder if the complete one has it. A second USB port would be kind of cool. Um, no, it has pins there. Um, because then you could hook up like an audio output and a, a Wi-Fi. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, this thing works well. I love that out of the box, you know, with that price that you see right there, that $180, um, I think it's Canadian, maybe not. <laughs> um, you get everything. You get the Pocket Beagle, you get the SD card installed, uh, pre-installed, you just connect to it and get going. It's probably the easiest startup that there is. I like how it's nice and flat across the bottom, easy to mount to things. It's a good controller. Uh, you know, when it comes to choosing controllers, as we talk about here all the time and in Learn Christmas Lighting Academy, uh, you need to look at where you need ports, what functions you need, and choose what's going to work best overall out of that. Uh, I can't make the determination for you in a short YouTube video, but I'm just here to say this is an option. And in a year and going forward, uh, you know, where it's been really hard to get controllers, uh, you know, it's worth looking at. Um, that's all. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope we don't catch any flack. I, I do, you know, I sincerely appreciate the FPP developers. I think from talking with Kurt, who runs Kurt Controllers here, I really believe he does too. And I believe that he uh, desires to help FPP grow. Um, I think we're all on the same team here. And this seems like a good controller. So if you like it, check it out. Link below, KurtController.com. Thanks so much to Kurt for lending me this controller, for sending it out. Uh, so that we could test it here and I'll continue testing it of course in my display to make sure it continues to work well. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. See ya.